Hey guys, we have a lot of alpha news, tips and tricks and specific DeFi strategies that you can use today. So let's get started. First of all, I would love to say that we have made a collaboration with the one and only legend Crypto Co. And we have discussed all the best airdrop strategies that we're currently doing, tips and tricks and best ways to actually be the most efficient possible airdrop hunter. So if you want to see the whole video, you have you can do so on our website and there's going to be a shorter version of our talk on his channel as well. Now, first of all, most important update is from Jumper Exchange, which uses LiFi protocol and LiFi protocol has been exploited just a couple days ago for $10 million. While the project itself is safe to use now and the incident has been contained, then that's at least great news. But the most important aspect of this all is how it actually happened. The thing that most people actually don't understand is that the token approvals are the most dangerous thing that you can do if you put unlimited approvals. $10 million was hacked for, from people who have manually moved the approval that is by default on Jumper Exchange for the specific amount that you're swapping into unlimited. Now, most projects have the option to simply put unlimited token approvals so that you don't have to approve them every time you make a same token swap. For example, Odos is a great exchange but every time you make a token approval before you have to make a swap you are asked to make an approval and in this case by default they're going to ask you to approve 115 quadrazillion tokens when you only need to approve the amount that you're swapping just the simple action of pressing loop you put the amount that you actually want to swap every time and your funds are so so much safer this is incredibly important and you can do the same thing on metamask they also have the option to put max which means max used for the current transaction in your wallet and this will mitigate a lot of the risks now the reason why jumper is one of the best exchanges out there for quite a while is because their token allowance by default puts exactly how much you have in your wallet so in theory you should have been safe for this hack and I hope that this does not dissuade you from using the exchange because I do believe that the funds will be tra traced <laughs> and returned. But in the meantime, yeah, this is just an incredibly important minor DeFi detail that you have to use in order to keep your wallet safety to a much, much higher degree. Only approve the amount of tokens you're actually swapping. All right, moving into Solana, we've got some updates for Sanctum. So Cruise Control has made a really nice thread regarding all things that you need to know in a very condensed matter. But the most important updates regarding this is that Sanctum is going to launch many exciting projects and products in the future. For example, Sanctum's launchpad, trying to rival Jupiter is a big task, but we'll see how it goes. They're also going to do Sanctum Profiles version 2 and most importantly, Sanctum Pay and being able to use your crypto to spend for everyday expenses is incredibly important. While we all know that there's stuff like crypto.com card, all of these actually include KYC. So being able to spend your crypto in a non-custodial way would be amazing. And I still haven't found such a strategy, but if you know it, please let us know in the comments below because it would be incredibly valuable. Then regarding the airdrop itself, as you know, 5% and 5% is being split between people who have generated experience on their pets and 5% is reserved for content creators who have, who have created content on Sanctum in the past. Now, this is incredibly disproportionate because whole 5% is shared between only around 2000 wallets and while the other 5% is reserved between huge amount of liquidity that was used in this sanctum airdrop farming campaign now this brings me to a very very important topic of if you have any experience in content creation or writing or even if you don't and you just want to try and build your career in wave 3 it is probably very very worthwhile to try and do so because of the disproportionate rewards that you can get from simply making basic content or a little more advanced content in this space sanctum's airdrop is the prime example like you would get about 250 300 tokens checker is live by the way if you have deposited so much soul but you would get more than 20,000 tokens for simply making a couple threads on twitter interacting with society and interacting with the people who are actually in the project seems to be going a long way these days now that airdrops are becoming more and more saturated so you have to get creative if you if this is something that interests you, then highly recommend to check out some of the ways to get started in Web3 as a career. And finally, for all of us who have actually missed this content creator grant, there's great news. Looking at you, Patrick, because you're actually going to be able to 
get some rewards regarding this. There's going to be a separate pool reserved for everyone who has actually created content on Sanctum but forgot to apply for this in time. Now, regarding other Solana updates, Dynamo DeFi has just published an amazing video regarding all the strategies and the latest airdrops on Solana, so I recommend you check it out. But of course, since we're all DGENs here, we're going to focus on just two of the most riskier plays, namely RainFi Finance and NX Finance. Now, of course, these both have about three to four million total value locked on Solana. And while you can always go with the safer options such as Jupiter or Sanctum, Meteora, Camino, even if you are a boomer, <laughs> you can also go for a little more Dijon play such as RainFi, which basically lets you fractionalize your NFTs and borrow against your NFTs on Solana. Or you can even kind of use leverage on NFTs because you can buy a portion of it and then sell it at a later date or you can buy for the rest of the NFT at a future date as well. The other one is NX Finance. This one actually integrates very nicely with Jupiter because we get so many questions. How do we farm Jupiter season two? And personally, I've been using the strategy of just going with JLP and perps trading on Jupiter while also using the DCA functionality. And those are the safest way to farm Jupiter. But if you want to go a little more risk on, then you can get 209% APR on your JLP by depositing it, in, depositing it in NX Finance, which lets, which lets you leverage your yield on Solana. And while we're on topic of Jupiter, there is simple ways to farm seasons two and three and all the seasons in the future. The easiest way to do so is simply by holding JLP and making a couple perpetual trades on the platform, such as longs or shorts, just you don't need to use a lot of leverage, as well as staking Jupe tokens and actively participating in governance. As we can see from a couple of days ago, they actively reward people who are active on the network. Finally, if you want to track all of your Solana holdings, one of the better platforms out there is SonarWatch. SonarWatch, you just input your wallet address, you don't have to do any confirmations, and you can track all of your assets on Solana and many other layer twos as well, as well as Bitcoin and even Aptos. Alternatively, you have Asset Dash. However, Asset Dash requires you to create an account, which might be beneficial for potential Asset Dash airdrop in the future. They also have an NFT, which seems to be a good investment from a portfolio standpoint, but of course, never financial advice. Now we got some quick follow up regarding scroll. So after their canvas was launched, we have been discussing a lot in our discord about the best strategies to do this. And it turns out that there's going to be some kind of badges for this canvas to be placed upon. And the best way to do so was actually with the ambient finance, because ambient is allowing you to actually generate a lot of these badges for simply providing liquidity and swapping on the platform. If you swap around $500 worth of the liquidity on ambient, you're going to get the swap Per batch and providing liquidity in the amount of thousand dollars plus is going to give you the provider <laughs> ambient provider badge so this is something that you can do and if you're interested in more strategies like this remember we have a private discord where we track all of the most important airdrops and airdrop funding opportunities we share a lot of alpha daily we help each other with referrals and many other things and of course all the information is always going to be on our website that you can check in the first link of the description Quickly moving into base ecosystem and some NFT news. If you have minted the base introduced NFT when base was first announced in February 2023, then you might be eligible for some based tokens. Of course, keep in mind that this is very risky and they are actively saying that they have no any collaboration or any kind of association with Coinbase Ventures. So they have really distanced themselves from this one. But if you have this NFT and you are willing to take on a little bit of risk you can claim these tokens when the claim goes live alternatively you can also buy this for seven eight dollars on secondary markets such as OpenSea, if you want to speculate that these base tokens might be worthwhile in the future of course base chain has recently in the last couple of weeks surpassed arbitrum by activity and wallets which is crazy but it is slowly but surely becoming the dominant ethereum layer 2 even though they might not never have a token because there's Coinbase stock, there has been so many airdrops from random meme coins for just using base chain. So from that perspective, it is a worthwhile investment of time, at least. And the other thing we have news from Frame XYZ. This has been, of course, canceled for quite a while now, but apparently they have been acquired by the company behind Pudgy Penguins. And everyone who was eligible for Frame airdrop in January, when we check this, then at least we might be getting some rewards in the future because they're saying that there's going to be some kind of honor system in their native incentive system 
So yeah, we'll keep you updated on this one. And if you're wondering what this easy node platform is, it basically deploys you a node in a couple simple clicks. And these testnet nodes have been incredibly, incredibly profitable in some cases. For example, people have received thousands of Solana for running Solana testnet nodes back in the day. Same thing with Celestia. People got 15, 20,000 Celestia tokens. So yeah, while it is very speculative, very hit and miss, it is also very, very profitable when you actually get the right one. Finally, we have some joke regarding Starknet. So apparently there's a <laughs> DeFi Spring 2.0 on Starknet and I love that they're trying, but let's be real, Starknet, stop trying to make Starknet happen. It's not going to happen. <laughs> and that's all the news regarding all the different ecosystems we covered today. If you like the content, like and subscribe with bell notifications on. And if you have any questions, I'm waiting for you in the comments below. If you're ready to take your area of hunting to the next level, we'll be waiting for you in our Discord. Thanks for watching. Until next time, have an amazing day.